Black Girl Stuff. Welcome to Black Girl Stuff. Tonight, we can't stop, won't stop. But first order of business this evening, it's time to go in the comments, and we're starting with a debate that has seemingly resurfaced since the announcement of this Black Girl Stuff cast. Who gets to determine who's black or who's black enough? Mm. So much has been said about the complexions of our skins. So let's address the proverbial elephant in the room. Bree, go ahead and kick it off with the first swipe. Girl, you know how crazy these comments Ooh. be, but one Instagram user commented, black girl stuff show? Only one fourth is black. Make it make sense. I honestly understand that, to be honest. Like for me, being a darker skinned black woman, being the darkest skin on this cast, I do really enjoy that my black is not questioned, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I've got 4C hair, I've got the black nose, I have full lips, I have a dark skin tone, and it really does, you know, on one end, I enjoy, again, walking into a room and you know I'm black, but on the flip mm -hmm. side, especially in this kind of environment, I feel like I'm being put on a stance to really, like, carry blackness on my back more so than you all may have to, whether you know it or you don't, right? Yeah. Really, so you feel like people are looking to you as that token black person yeah, who absolutely. holds this level of responsibility to put on for every other black person absolutely. out there. And absolutely, yeah. not for every other black person out there, but just when it comes to the show mm -hmm. specifically. And I, I mean, I can take it back to even one time I was traveling to East Africa, right? And I was traveling with, with some of my friends who are lighter skinned than me, and I can't tell you the amount of times people thought I was a tour guide. You know what I mean? Even um, though, one, I'm not from there, <laughs> we're all visiting, and my friend had the map. So it's not even the <laughs> You don't so even look even, East African. And, I mean, let's talk about that. That's I mean, crazy. if anything, my roots let's can be that. more West, yeah. <laughs> West yeah. versus East. But yeah, I think it's situations like that really put me back into this mindset of like, how do I want to portray myself, not only as a black skinned mm -hmm. American, but also how much is what I'm saying, is what I'm doing, is how I look, really saying that, hey, I enjoy how I look, you know, mm -hmm. because oftentimes, whereas I feel like, for instance, with my hair, I can switch up my hair all the time. Like, yeah, I really it see yeah. it as an accessory. It's like wearing a necklace, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> but at the same that, time, yeah. I felt like, you know what, if I do this or if I do that, it's taken more seriously because on this cast, on the darkest skin. Do you feel the same as being, well, you know, like these comments, I think that it's important that we recognize where they're coming from because mm -hmm. it is true that historically the media has cherry picked lighter complexioned yeah. individuals to represent black people on the whole and has made it seem that dark skin is undesirable. And that couldn't be, you know, further from the truth. And it's mm -hmm. a horrible, horrible thing. And we have to address it and say, we know this, but intra, you know, colorism is also a thing, yeah, right? Yeah, and that's course. something. And all because you have lighter complexion people on the cast doesn't mean they're not black. And by the way, we are all black, right. <laughs> you know? For sure. And I agree with you, Demetria. Like, media definitely tends to lean you know, whitewash mm -hmm. entertainment. I will always say that. But I think that one, you shouldn't have to carry that burden of representing right. black yeah. women yeah. across the diaspora, mm -hmm. right? And also, as as lighter skinned women, we should be free to be like own our blackness mm -hmm. and not be typecasted in that light skinnedness. I feel like who gets to determine what is black? Mm -hmm. I feel like my mother, my parents are black, and I feel like just because. So does that mean that my darker sister? is more black than me because I'm a lighter hue. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's just very disrespectful to read the comments and them saying that I'm not black. It's disrespectful not only to me, but to my mother, my father, my whole entire lineage. I remember my mother even saying, like, when I was younger, when she would carry me in the park or when she would take me to the doctor's office, my mother is darker than Aquila. Mm -hmm. wow. So we would be in the doctor's office or in the park, and a black person mm -hmm. would say to my mother, oh, whose child are you babysitting? Yeah. Who's, or is she adopted? Mm -hmm. And my mother was like so offended by her own kind, mm -hmm. saying that I couldn't be her child just because I was of lighter skin mm -hmm. or because yeah, my hair sad. texture was different. Mm -hmm. And that's just unfair. Yeah, so another user said, I'm convinced they always throw one dark skinned person in there like a token, so nobody can say there's colorist activity going on. But when are we gonna see something with dark skin females, period? And to be honest, like, Again, that's kind of when I when I take it to the show and I'll take it outside of the show too. At first when I recognized that I'm gonna be on, casted on black girl stuff, I was super excited, I was super ready. I was like, you know what, this is purpose driven and I'm here. And that's the same way I felt about each and every one of my fellow co-hosts. But at the same time, I immediately thought back to all of my experiences in corporate America and how I felt like even though we have the Crown Act and you know, yes, 
again with your hair you can wear it how you want and not be discriminated against you could do whatever how you want I feel like as a dark-skinned black woman especially here I had to be a little more conscious of how I show up mm -hmm. so that's why you saw the first couple episodes even though I've had you know pretty much a buzz cut for like two years you know what I mean I've consistently went back and 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 decided to wear a wig or decided to wear weaves because I felt like you know even though again my skin cannot be judged I think being dark-skinned and with short hair I feel like it, it just kind of gave off an impression of like you know what power for to the power people. to the people and yeah. I wasn't trying to do that step stage one when the people don't really know who I am and what I'm about. I remember literally like if taking it outside of this, other corporate jobs where I did the same thing. And because of that, I did that in interviews and I did that when I first got the job. And I realized when I was speaking to one of my lighter skin, you know, um, colleagues afterwards and we're just talking about the interview process, I had to do 10 interviews mm. in order to get this wow. job. And this is me working in corporate America after having not only a, you know, a bachelor's degree, an Ivy League degree as well in a master's in business, and then I still had 10 interviews while she said she had three. Not only that, I then realized when she told me her pay and my pay, there was a gap. And this is not just my experience, and this is not for a lack of negotiating, because I did. It's the experience of tons of darker skinned black women. I feel like for me and a lot of people, we don't get the opportunity to be who we are freely. And that's the problem. It goes beyond dating. It goes beyond beauty standards. It's about the money as well. And it's about how we're perceived. And I think like, you know, when I, when I hear this comment, it kind of feels like, I hear you because I, I kind of feel the same. <laughs> there needs to be a lot of more situations where there's dark female cast members all around. It's not to deter what any of you are doing or myself, because we all, again, deserve to be here. But I recognize how much, as a community, we say, as black people, we have to work twice as hard for half as much. I feel like as a dark-skinned black woman, it's three times as hard. I started off my career wearing my hair natural. Mm. And my professors, you know, at the University of Kansas told me that you would never work on television with hair like that. But when I see comments like this, I feel like it reduces us to just our skin color. And yeah. for me, a black Nigerian American, it seems that they want to invalidate my experience, my upbringing, and the contributions that I've made to pushing the culture forward. I don't for one second pretend to think that my voice is the voice of all black people, yeah. but I am a black woman who stands up for black people. Our issues are equality, mm -hmm. right? Our fight for justice. And maybe you can't relate to my complexion, but at least you can respect that, yes. I would think. We all have to carry the burden of being black, mm -hmm. depending on mm -hmm. who our audience is. Yeah. So my my journey through acting, being a creative, I've been in casting rooms where I did pass and benefit from being looking racially ambiguous, right? right? I will. I have gotten roles based on that. I can't deny that mm -hmm. privilege. But I also have been in rooms where, like you said, they, they tend to associate darker skin with a certain type of woman. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not fair. No. Because as the, at, in, in a casting room one time, a casting director said to me, oh, you did great in your performance, but you can't play this church girl mm -hmm. because light skin look, gives us vixen vibes. And oh. we need more of a wholesome vibe. So they chose a darker skin complexion woman just because her complexion gave more wholesome. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair. And like you said, to, to your point, you should not declassify mm -hmm. beauty with black. That is a, that's a disgrace. That's degrading to yes. us. And you're actually offending the people that you're claiming to be defending. I'm not taking away from anything because I understand both sides. I understand the privilege. I understand how hard it is. And I understand how it feels mm -hmm. to feel like you're the token. I mm -hmm. understand everything. I'm just saying that if we all came together to fight these issues instead of fighting each other in our group, Look at all these other groups sticking together. Mm -hmm. And look it. at us being mm -hmm. catty and we're just like, oh, well, you know what I mean? I just I just feel like it's kind of catty and if we came together, we could conquer this together and like just... Just dominate together. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Just dominate I together. I, I just I, I hate that they're dividing us and we are divided in this group to where sometimes we don't know where we fit in. Right. Some, when, when we're around, like, not, not to talk about white people, but when we're around white people, we're not white enough. No. Nope. They're, they're like, oh, well, you're black. And then when I'm around a darker skinned person who, who may feel like I'm not melanated enough. Mm -hmm. They may feel like, oh, you think you cute, huh? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, no, I'm, we're together. Yeah. Right. And I just, yeah. I hate it. That's Carry a great that point, Tori. Exactly. Well, guys, we, there's another comment here that I think we need to read. I mean, this mm -hmm. was really interesting. It says, uh, just to sum things up, you know, some people claim to be black when it's convenient or suits their purpose, but never witness the true struggles of a real black woman, the true strength of a black woman, <clears throat> the integrity mm. of a black woman, and how presumptuous of a comment that is, right, when you have a uh, 
poor black women poor sitting black here. Women. Poor, actually, real black women. Yeah. We're not strong, right? We have no integrity. And you're basing that what off of the, the, the shades of the rainbow here? The hue I of mean, our skin. And, and it, it's really crazy to me because I just want to make sure that we address a different side of colorism too. Because oftentimes when we hear colorism being spoken about, dark skinned women speak about colorism, it's from a, a, a point of self hate. I think oftentimes what I've heard in the media, even me growing up, is that a lot of dark skinned women had a lot of periods of time where they like, hated themselves, where they felt like, you know what, my skin, I want to change it, I want to be lighter, I want to do this. That was never my experience. I've always, always felt very proud of my skin. Again, the fact that, at least with one thing, I didn't have to be questioned, you right. know, because yeah. I knew in my life, being, being from like a poor economic background, being mm -hmm. first generation, being et cetera, there was a lot of things I was constantly having to test, mm -hmm. you know, having to strive, having right. to mm -hmm. prove myself to others. And I knew at least with being black, that was something I never had to question. And I understand, like, so thinking about your experiences, mm -hmm. I recognize that that's a very, that's the opposite lens. It is. I that's... think for me, I had a dark skinned mom. I had dark skinned siblings. What I realized though with colorism is not growing up, it's now. Mm -hmm. I now recognize, this, I, I mentioned the job, I can talk about dating and just going out all day long when it comes to just colorism, especially being in LA. Oftentimes when I go out, what I've been shown, especially just being, again, a darker skinned black woman, what I've been shown is that it's a lower level, a lower threshold and a lower level of like what it really means to walk in your femininity. I feel like I didn't have the, the capacity or the kind of guidance to be soft. I, I couldn't be soft and I wasn't interpreted as soft, you know, oftentimes by black men. And that's not to say that they also didn't experience colorism because black men and colorism is, <laughs> is huge and they, yeah. have, and they can have their own segment on this too. But I remember even going out and I've heard in the background with, again, with my lighter skin friends or with dark skin friends and we're just all out together. Um, oh, she's cute, but she black, black. It's, you know, but she got to ask though. You know what I mean? Really demoralized to my features versus the fact that I'm beautiful overall. And I had to be in a mindset consistently telling myself I'm beautiful, I'm this, literally in my head having to say this because I knew I wouldn't hear it the whole night and I knew I wouldn't be shown it the whole night in a way that a lot of women who are lighter complexion I feel like C. You knew you were accepted. You accepted your black the entire time, right? Oh, yeah. Growing up, I actually felt the opposite. Mm -hmm. I knew I was black. I knew I was a black woman, but I often questioned, why didn't black accept me? Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like I had to be darker. I mm -hmm. wanted to tan. I was ashamed of being mm -hmm. light-skinned. Yeah. I didn't even allow people to call mm -hmm. me in the South. You know, they'd be like, hey, red, no, no. say red, what up? Light or white girl. Or white here. girl. No, no, no. I would fight you if you mm -hmm. called me any of those names because I am from a mm -hmm. darker-skinned woman, mm -hmm. and I felt like, Looking at my family, I didn't fit in. So I wanted to be darker so I could fit in. So I didn't necessarily associate being lighter with beauty. I felt like darker made me more beautiful. Darker mm -hmm. made me more stronger. Darker made me more, uh, you know, have more of a black woman's strength. I recognized that strength. and honored it. Mm -hmm. And so I often strive mm -hmm. for that. So I have always been searching for black to accept me. And I think me and Tori, we had a mm -hmm. conversation about how we had to learn how to fight. Just <laughs> we because. did. I, I'm yeah. not going to lie. I had to learn how to fight from beating a couple bitches ass. Yeah. I feel like being from the hood, I'm from the Hood, so we all fought but I, I just feel like if you're lighter in the hood you mm -hmm. better know how to fight because mm -hmm. they're gonna pick on you and they may pick on you because you're lighter skin because being lighter was looked at as weak mm -hmm. you yeah. know what I'm saying and I felt more accepted mm -hmm. when I won the fight because I was celebrated for me I mean people will come to my house trying to jump me but you know I mean call me Oreo white girl all of that mm -hmm. but I'm happy that we got a lot of this out in the yeah. open and hopefully everyone now has a better understanding about who we are, mm -hmm. right? And maybe just a little bit more compassion overall when we talk about this subject, right? And each other's feelings. All right, guys, coming up next, the king behind the song of the summer. We can't stop, won't stop, because Christian Combs is straight ahead.